Hi, this is Kaden from VIA Value Investing Academy. Now, since last Friday, many of my friends has been sending me messages, giving me calls, and then asking me about this Dow Jones, uh, which has plunged more than 1,000 points since last Friday. So what does it mean? For the past 30 minutes, I've been doing some article reading, and let me share with you some of the articles that I've come across. Dow Jones plunges 1,175. US stock plunge sparks global sell-off. Dow Jones plunges 117 points as Wall Street bloodbath intensifies. And there are many, many articles. So what does this really, really mean? <laughs> now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you how all of us can make more than 100% by taking advantage of any economic crisis that comes our way. In fact, investing should be as simple as making a cup of tea. So how can we make 100% out of an economic crisis? Now, before I answer the question, let me share with you some of the topics that we need to cover very, very quickly. Now, first one, I need to share with you how does the stock market behave during and after a crisis? Second thing is what's the difference between how much a stock is worth and the movement of the existing stock price? And number three, how to make, this is the most important, how to make more than 100% out of an economic crisis. So let's start with topic number one. How does the stock market behave during and after any economic crisis? So how does the stock market behave during and after a crisis? This example is the most recent one that took place about 10 years ago, which is the Lehman Brothers economic crisis in 2008 and 2009. And you can see, now this chart shows the S&P a 500 index. And before the crisis, which took place in 2009, you can see that the index peaked at 1561.80 points. Yeah, peak. And then subsequently, when a crisis took place, the share price plunged. And of course, the share price plunged because people are worried, people are scared, so they start selling their shares, which is why the share price plunged. And how low can a share price plunge? Goes from 1,500 points to about 683.38 points. So how many percentage drop is that. Now, it drops by a massive 56.2% from 1005 to 683. So this is how the share price behave during a crisis. Whenever there's a crisis, it's bad news, the share price will always drop. But the interesting thing is every time when a share price falls, it recovers. So if it recovers, how many percentage can it recover? Now, let me show you this. So it recovers. And it went from the low point of 683.38 to 2648.94. And that is a whopping increase by 287.6%. So this is one behavior that you can see during the 208-209 Lehman Brothers crisis. How about the next example, which is way back in 2001 when a dot-com bubble burst. So let me show you. Before the dot-com bubble burst, the share price of S&P 500 went up to a peak of 1,536.46. And when a crisis came, as usual, people worried, people are scared, people have fear, the share price drops. And it drops to 800.58 points. And that is a huge 47.6% fall in the share price. But remember, every time when a share price falls due to a crisis, it recovers, the share price goes up. So right now you can see the recovery it goes up all the way back to 1561.80, which is almost close to the previous high. So how many percent increase? Increased by 95.1%. So what does it mean? If I could sort of generalize two cases, every time a share price falls by about 50%, and when it recovers, it doesn't recover by 50%. In fact, it recovers by close to 100%. So that's how you can take advantage of any crisis. So let me show you, share with you the third case, which is way back to this uh, incident called the Black Monday. So what's Black Monday? So Black Monday refers to the Monday which took place on the 19th of October, 1987, when the share market around the entire world crashed. And you can look at this heading, it says Wall Street's Blackest Hour. So if you look at the chart, 
when is the Black Monday? If you look at this tiny little grey arrow over here, this is where Black Monday has taken place. Can you see the drop is so little as compared to this portion over here and this portion over here? Yeah, so you realize that as the years years go, whenever the crisis uh, appear, the drop will be huge and the recovery will be huge as well. So this is a zoom in of how the Black Monday looks like. And the share price started at a peak of 336.77 points on the 25th of August 1987. And then it falls to 224.84, which is about two months later. And then the drop is about 33.2%. Remember, during every crisis, whenever there's fear, there's anxiety and so on, share price will always uh, drop, but it will recover in the long run. So how much will it recover? From 224.84%, it has went up to 2648.94 points, which is today. So the difference is, since Black Monday until today, it has went up by 1078.1%. So what is the lesson that I want to share with you? Is the market in which I'm referring to the US market will always recover after any crisis. Now, bearing in mind that it might not apply to an individual company. So since the market, which is the US market, will always recover, it simply means that if you are able to buy the entire US market during a crisis, you will be able to make money. So now the question is, how do you do it? I'll talk about it later. So the next topic that I want to talk about is, what is the difference between how much a stock is worth and a share price? I'm just going to use a very, very simple example. Now, this is a piece of $10 note, which is a Singapore $10 note. And this piece of paper is worth $10. So I'm going to paste it here. Yeah. So how the stock market behaves is even though this piece of paper is worth $10, but the offering price where the stock market asks you to whether buy or sell fluctuates every single day. For example, on a Monday, somebody may go to a house and ask you, whether do you want to buy this piece of paper at $12? So what will be the answer? Your answer is simply no. Why? Because this piece of paper is only worth $10. And on second day, somebody may go to your house and ask you, do you want to buy this piece of paper at $15? And your answer is simply no, because this piece of paper is only worth $10. So now the question is, so when do you buy this piece of paper? Now you will buy this piece of paper only when somebody offer you below $10. For example, somebody come to your house and ask you, do you want to buy this piece of paper at $9? So right now you are going to make a dollar if you buy at nine. And if somebody offer you to buy at seven, then you're going to make $3 because this piece of paper is only worth, uh, be because this piece of paper is worth $10. So remember the falling of the Dow Jones, what does it mean? When the Dow Jones fall, it simply means that the share price is falling. Remember, this is the share price, this is the share price. Now, bear in mind that the value or how much this piece of paper is worth did not fall. So be able to differentiate between how much this piece of paper is worth and the price that it's offering to you. So if you apply it into a stock market, this is how it goes. If the value or if the actual worth of the company did not fall, but the share price fall below this blue line. So what do you do? This will be the buying zone. But of course, there will be some companies where as time goes, it gets better and better. It becomes more and more valuable. So this blue line will not go horizontally, but this blue line will go up. So when do you buy? Remember, share price go up and down. And you only buy it when the share price is below this blue line, which represents how much the stock is worth. So you can buy a stock under these two scenarios when a share price falls below how much it's worth. Scenario one and scenario two. But there will be a scenario where you accidentally discover companies where not only the share price keep falling, but the actual value or how much it's worth falls. So such companies may be cheap, but they are cheap and bad companies. So these are the companies that we do not want. We only want companies that is cheap and good, or it could be cheap, good, and growing. So that's how you can take advantage of the falling share price when the value or the actual worth of the stock did not fall. So two important lessons. Remember, during any crisis, the share price will always fall. But the good thing is, after it falls, 
the US market will always recover. Lesson number one. Lesson number two, always take advantage when a share price of a stock falls. But remember, provided the value of the actual worth of the stock did not fall. So how can you execute these two learning lessons? Below this video, there'll be two links. One of the links is going to link you to our investment guidebook. Please download a copy of this investment guidebook and follow the steps for you to take advantage of the upcoming crisis, if there's any. Second, to be able to invest in a cheap, good and growing company or invest in a cheap, good and company during any crisis, what you need to do is click on the link below and attend our upcoming free value investing masterclass. And I shall see you soon. Goodbye. This is Kaden from Value Investing Academy VIA. See you. Goodbye.